On behalf of everyone at Fiddleback Forge, happy Fiddleback Friday, everyone. I am Robert. I'm here to bring you the 18 awesome knives for the Fiddleback Friday release for this week. 16 of those knives are Fiddleback Forge knives, and then we have two apprentice knives. Uh, one from Miss Amy with Warlander Enterprises is the handle you can look her up on the Instagrams and check out some more of her work. Um, we introduced her work to you last week, uh, on last Fiddleback Friday, and I can tell you they released at 9 o'clock, and her knife was gone at exactly 9 o'clock. So just a testament to the awesome value that she's bringing to the table and really nice knife designs, really super clean work. Um, we can't say enough good things about her, and I think you'll agree when you see her knife this week. It's pretty amazing. Uh, we've also got a really amazing knife from Joey at JB Knifeworks, an apprentice, also an apprentice here at Fiddleback Forge. Um, you've seen his work in the past, which is absolutely amazing. There's actually several knives of his up uh, in the apprentice section on the site. So if you go to fiddlebackforge.com, look under a, on shop under apprentice knives, you'll see a ton of Joey's work under there. It's absolutely beautiful. Kitchen knives, outdoor knives. He's really, uh, really super versatile on everything and uh, does everything super well. So we've also got 16 killer Fiddleback Forge knives, uh, lots of handle colors, lots of handle materials. Uh, lots of variations in knife sizes and designs and styles. So it's a really cool week, very versatile. Uh, I think you guys are going to really love it. Keep in mind, all these go up on the website, fiddlebackforge.com at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday, as usual, as they do every single week. While you're on the website, sign up for the newsletter to make sure you always see the previews uh, for every knife that we release every week on Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to do the in-hand demo so you can see what all of these knives are going to look like when they show up in your mailbox next week. And here we go. All right, so let's kick this off with the newest knife from Amy. Warlander Enterprises is her handle on the Instagrams. If you want to check her out, that's how you spell it. Enterprises, you're on your own for the spelling on that one. So uh, this new blade right here, this is called the Mesquite, but it is not Mesquite wood, so don't get it mistaken. This is actually a Bacote she's got on the handle scales, and it is a beautiful piece of Bacote at that, and she's done a great job of book matching it. Um, so all the lines and everything line up on that perfectly. Um, it's just an absolutely beautifully made knife. She's done a really great job with this. Nice hammer texture on the 80 CRV2. Uh, starts out as an eighth inch on the stock there. Uh, three and five eighths inch on the blade, eight and a half inches overall. Uh, you can see she's done a great job in balancing that out. Feels really super solid in hand, really controllable. The handle shape is really nice. Amy's just come a long way. She's uh, quite the fantastic knife maker on top of being a fantastic leather maker. So all of her knives, um, unlike the Fiddleback Forge knives, come with a sheath uh, that she makes along with the knife to match. So you get that combo uh, all included that goes up on the site. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, along with all the other knives that you see here, uh, including this next one from another apprentice, Mr. Joey Berry, JB Knifeworks. Uh, this is the model he's calling the Perfect Hunter. So you'll notice uh, some features on this you're not used to seeing a lot out of here is uh, sharpening choil there, uh, as long with, along with a, uh, a zero edge grind on that. So there is no secondary bevel uh, down here on, to give you that sharpened edge. Um, it goes all the way from the top to the bottom, and it gives you a super thin blade, super sharp blade. So this is intended uh, for breaking down game to be super razor sharp, easy to sharpen in the field. Uh, it's 01 steel. Uh, it's hardened up to 61 on the, hard, on the uh, Rockwell hardness scale, and it is a beautifully done knife. It's very purpose driven. Uh, you know when you're holding this that you're going to do slicing and pull cuts. Um, it's just very comfortable on hand, any grip that you can imagine using uh, during that process. So this is not a bushcraft knife, this is for breaking down game. Uh, so if you're looking at your newest, if you're looking for a new hunting partner, uh, you're not going to get much better than this one. So as with all of Joey's knives, the finish is impeccable. Black canvas micarta, it's uh, got black canvas on the liners, white on the pinstripes. And he's got these nice silver pins in there that you don't see very often as well. So really beautifully done knife there from Mr. Joey Berry, JV Knife Works. He set him back there. And now let's get started on the fiddleback knives. Uh, so today we've got uh, 16, 17, 
something like that. We'll count them out when we're done. Uh, Fiddleback Forge knives. First up is the only Fiddleback Forge knife uh, for tonight that is not A2 steel. So this is the Warthog. You're familiar with this model. It's one of the newer ones from Andy. Uh, it's very much in the hiking buddy size range. Handle shape is a little more open than the hiking buddy. Uh, the tip is a lot leaner and more slender for a lot more for precision cuts. Um, it is just a beautifully done knife, super comfortable in hand. You can see the balance point is right there at that second set of pins. It gives you a really nice feel. This knife, first impression you get when you pick it up, um, even for being desert ironwood, is very light. Uh, so it's super light on that. Really cool. This is 8th inch CPM 154 on the blade. Uh, blade length on the Warthog is about three and a quarter, so it's a little bit longer than, say, your hiking buddy. Um, but overall length, uh, still in the seven and three eighths range. Uh, Desert Ironwood on the scales, like I said. Natural Liners Blue Pinstripes, which is absolutely one of my favorites with this kind of wood, especially this shade. Absolutely beautiful. Got the Trinity pin out right there. Really well done. Super well done. Uh, this is also the deal of the night. Um, this was actually priced incorrectly, but we had already released the newsletter. Uh, so the price is going to stand. The price you see on the site is what it's going for. Uh, you are getting a discount accidentally, but uh, we definitely want to honor what we put out there when, when at all possible. So uh, if you're getting that one, you're getting a fantastic knife, probably my favorite of the evening, and uh, a great deal on it and that, at that, and CPM 154. So we'll get started on the A2s now. Another relatively new model, you've only seen a few of these, and it's in the little bit bigger than a runt family, and this is the Pocket Ninja. So this one, really cool design, really small as you can see, three finger design on that. Uh, the Pocket Ninja is raspberry micarta, thick, thick black liners, starts out with eighth inch A2, skeletonized full tang as you can see there, and uh, the blade's about two and a half inches, and it's about five and a half inches overall. So a really cool little knife. Got the Trinity pin out on there as well. So it's pin heavy for such a short handle. Um, the, the handle shape is reminiscent, if you're familiar with the Esquire model, um, it's very reminiscent of the way that that's kind of finished out and the kind of tombstone angles kind of thing. Uh, very comfortable in hand. Uh, really lends itself to putting your pinky behind. Good three finger design. Feels nice, solid, locked in. Uh, if you're looking for a great daily carry knife and a pocket sheath doesn't get much better than that right there so the high grind on this one makes it super slicey started out as eighth inch on the uh, a2 steel there and that raspberry micarta is sweet so let me put her down right there and let's see let's go to the next small model on the lineup uh, this has been a pretty popular model it's the smallest of uh, three brothers i would say uh, this is the Daimyo, and the Daimyo is the smallest version of the Trinity, and the other ones are the uh, the Shogun and the Emperor, uh, the Emperor being much, much larger than this. This is meant to be a very small daily carry knife, very uh, unintimidating. Not going to freak anybody out if you pull this out to open a box or something at work. Uh, so really nice in the pocket sheath as well. Um, you can see that uh, Python Micarta with the black canvas bolster there, black canvas on the liners. This one is tapered, as you can see. Really cool little knife. It's got that kind of upswept look to it. Very open on the handle design, so it, it indexes really well, just like the larger ones do. Um, but whether you have small hands or large hands, uh, it's really going to feel like it fits you because of the, the handle design being so open. Uh, so you can hold it pretty much any way you want to. It feels comfortable. Uh, you feel locked in. Uh, but you still have enough freedom of movement where you don't feel like you can only hold it one way. So really cool design on that. Python micarta is really cool. Got a little different character on each side. Really cool stuff. So that is the Daimyo. <clears throat> and a couple more on the small side. Let's go with a brand new fresh model that was released just this past week. Um, has met with some pretty good reviews so far from anybody who has picked it up in person, and that is the pairing knife. So this pairing has the uh, tangerine burlap for the handle, 
and uh, eighth inch A2 taper tang. Super nice commando. So it's got no liners, no pinstripes on that. And it's uh, two and five eighths inch on the blade and uh, about six and three eighths overall. So just under six and a half inches overall. Uh, just big enough where you can get a full four finger grip on it. Uh, like a lot of the newer designs with Andy, uh, just like the last one, the Daimyo, you've got really good indexing here to really lock it in place, but the rest of the handle is very open. Uh, considering this design is meant for breaking down your fruits and vegetables, uh, being a good daily carry knife and general purpose in that arena, um, that's what you want. You want something that's, you can hold it in any, any, any grip and really get your, get your skins peeled and everything there. That one's awesome and that bright tangerine, really cool. Um, that one's gonna make somebody super happy. I'm really happy with this design. It's probably one of my favorites of the newer designs. Uh, definitely one that I'm gonna pick up personally. Um, really cool. And there's actually uh, one left from last week as well, if you wanna check that out with Bolster. Um, can't remember which one it was, but uh, it's on the side under the handmade knife section. All these go up um, under the Fiddleback Friday section and the handmade knife section. So you can find them either either place, but if you're picking them up at nine o'clock, the fastest way to grab them is under the Fiddleback Friday section. Um, this one is the bigger brother to when I was telling you about the Daimyo. Uh, this one is the Shogun. So this is the middle of the line, three and five eighths inch on the blade, seven and seven eighths inch overall. So just under eight inches overall. Nice full four finger design with plenty of room. I wear a large glove to give you an idea. Uh, like I said, it's got that really nice indexing there with the rest of the handle being real open. So it's real comfortable in hand no matter what size hand you have. So just a really cool design. Taper tang on that as you can see. And this is the black camus micarta with the natural liners. Orange pinstripes, which is a really killer combo. So that's a really cool knife. So that's the Shogun. A2 steel on that. Eighth inch is what it started out as. I believe, let me double check that for you while you're looking at it here. Yeah, eighth inch A2 with a tapered tang. So we'll put that one back here by Mr. Joey's knife. And moving on to the next one. So I'm gonna show you the, uh, the bigger version before I show you the smaller version of this next knife. And this one was designed, as you know, uh, to take, incorporate some of the design features of a knife that Andy got from a man named Bill Snow, who's a fantastic knife maker. Um, so this is the Snow Bill, in tribute to him and his design. Um, this is made specifically for this hump right here to be on your ring finger. So uh, you're not trying to crowd your three fingers in here or go behind it or in front of it. Um, you're literally putting your two fingers in here to index. And this ring finger right here fits. Pinky locks in. It gives you a ton of control, a ton of grip. Uh, this thing is made to put in some work with that, having that short, really super grippy handle and the shorter blade, this is made for some really heavy duty work. Uh, eighth inch A2 on that. And again, this uh, raspberry micarta that you saw earlier as well. Uh, the blade on that is uh, about three and, three and one eighth as far as the length goes, and then uh, seven inches overall. So really cool knife. This one does great in a pocket sheath as well. It's about that size where you could go uh, belt or pocket sheath. And that raspberry micarta is really cool. Kind of gives you a topographical map kind of look to it. Taper tang on it. Natural liners. That Trinity pin out, but because of the shape on this one, that Trinity pin out kind of, kind of follows that curve, follows that hump. Really cool design feature there. So that's the Snowbill. So you see what size that looks like in hand. Full four finger design. Pinky is on the very end of it there. Uh, so that's the full size Snowbill. So that inspired a smaller version called the Little Snowbill. L-I-L Snowbill. So here's the Little Snowbill. You can see the difference here. Um, still gives you that, that ring finger hump, but that's pretty much what you're going to get on there. Pinky tucks behind it. So if you're looking for a really cool uh, everyday carry knife, you want something small, not intimidating, um, super easy to hold, you got a lot of grip to it because of the shape, uh, that's the little Snowbill. So just to show you a size difference here, if I can, hopefully I don't drop these. 
so you can really see how much size difference you got there. And the little snowbell is going to appear actually a little larger than it is because of the force perspective of being in the front there. So that gives you a good idea there. Can't hold it any other way because I'll, uh, I'll drop it, which I don't want to do. So we'll set that one right there. And then I've got another little snowbell. That one was natural canvas. And it was 332 A2. Uh, so the next one up is in Fire Dog Micarta with a natural canvas bolster, also in 332 A2. Really awesome little knives. This one's also not very intimidating, uh, especially as a small knife. A lot of people uh, don't like smaller knives. Well, one of the reasons some people don't like smaller knives uh, is because they feel like they're going to ride up on the blade too easy. Uh, this design with that uh, really good indexing right there along with the finger guard right there is just a really confidence inspiring knife. Uh, the ring finger hump on there giving you so much control. You just don't feel like this knife is going to move from however you lock in your grip on it. Uh, so that's one of the advantages there. So if you need something that's not intimidating, uh, not only to other people when you take it out, but not intimidating to use either, uh, the little snowbill uh, or even the full-size snowbill definitely fits the bill for that. So uh, probably the last smaller uh, EDC-sized knives that we got coming up. It's kind of an old fan favorite for Fiddleback Forge. Uh, you don't see them a ton anymore, but we still do make them occasionally because uh, we love them and so do other people and this is the pocket kephart so this is made from the uh, andy roy's version of the kephart which is a much larger knife with a full four inch blade this one is the pocket kephart and as you can imagine uh, designed to go in a pocket sheath so the pocket kephart uh, as far as measurements go you got two and three quarter inch on the blade six inches overall uh, this one's got 8th inch A2 taper tang on there, as you can see. And this one's double mint jade G10 on the handle with that lime pinstripe, black liners. Super cool little knife right there. So this is one of those knives people pick it up and they either immediately love it or immediately want something else. Uh, you know, uh, based on knives that you've got, uh, what shape you like. So if you like a more square handle, more full handle for a smaller knife, uh, this may be the one that you really, really love. So that is the Pocket Kephart and that JG10. And we got another one in Double Mint Jade as well. Actually, we've got two more. Um, I will show you the next one, which is a variation on an existing model. Uh, so this is kind of a one-off. We've made a couple of them like this before. Uh, this is the shank, uh, but most of the time when you see the shank, you don't have the swedge on the top. Um, as you can see, that swedge is not sharpened or I would be uh, squirting blood at this point. Uh, so it is for just reducing drag and because it makes it look super sexy. So that's the Fiddleback Forge shank. Eighth inch A2 on that. Got the swedge on there. Really sexy blade there. Hopefully there's no lint on there. It's hard for me to there's some. Sorry about that. That double mint JG10 is really cool. And it takes on the color of that pinstripe, which is a lime pinstripe with the black liners on there. Just a really gorgeous knife. So super sexy. Nice EDC size. A little bit larger on the size for, for pocket carry, but you definitely can pocket carry that in a sheath or you can up step it up do a belt sheath with that uh, sheaths are available over on fiddlebackoutpost.com if you're not familiar uh, some diomedes industries sheaths are made to fit most fiddleback forge knives fiddleback forge is only a knife maker though so we don't have sheaths on fiddleback forge and we don't make them uh, amy does but that's about it so this one getting into the larger knives here so this is going to be on your larger bushcraft knives uh, this is the luku and any of you that have a, a fiddleback forge recluse uh, with a four inch blade this is the step up from that with on almost five inch blade on there um, it is actually uh, listed as a five inch blade but it comes in a little bit under a five inch blade on most of them uh, but it's nine inches overall uh, this one's got the teal denim canvas micarta. It's got the Trinity pin out. 
natural liners, orange pinstripes. Just a beautiful knife. Uh, this, for many people, is the perfect size and perfect shape of blade, uh, depending on your preferences, of course. Uh, it's relatively open in design, so it is comfortable for a variety of hand sizes, and it's got plenty of room on the handle as well um, for doing all your various bushcrafting activities. Just a really comfortable knife, really great knife. Balance point is right there in between those two pins. Uh, so it gives it that kind of nimble feel uh, when you've got your hands placed right here. You can really move that thing around uh, even for the size of it. It doesn't feel like it's a big knife in hand. It feels very nimble uh, because of the balance put into it. Uh, really cool. You can see the taper tang a little better there. Just a light taper. Make sure that balance point gets in the right spot. That's what the taper's for. And uh, that bad boy is going to make somebody that is outdoorsy very, very happy very, very quickly. So moving on, we got the last five Fiddleback Forge knives coming up. So this one is uh, a bushcraft model, uh, but it's very much a very unique design in the Fiddleback Forge lineup. And this is the, sorry, I'm cleaning it while I'm talking. That's why you don't see it yet, sorry. So this is the Gunstock Bushcrafter. I was trying to get the lint off. There's still some lint there. Don't worry, it's not scratched, it's perfect. But uh, the Gunstock Bushcrafter is named because the handle shape is very much like the stock or buttstock on a rifle, as you can see there. So this one is even in wood that would make any gunstock look beautiful. This is desert iron wood. And I uh, got the natural canvas on the liners there. Absolutely fantastic knife. Uh, four and three eighths inch on the blade, nine and a quarter inch overall. Um, very comfortable in hand. Um, sometimes people get a little concerned about the kind of humpiness right here in the middle that it wouldn't be comfortable, but it absolutely just locks into your palm. It's a really nice design. Just super, super nice. Balance point on that right there at those second set of pins. So like I said, even for the size of these knives, because they're balanced so well, um, you can see me kind of flipping it around. I always know where the blade is on this. It always feels comfortable. I always know where everything is. Um, it's just really well designed, really well balanced. Um, also, because it kind of flares back out right here, if you need to do a little bit of light chopping uh, to get your kindling straightened out, um, you can do so. This isn't really meant to be a chopper uh, with a long, lean blade like that, but as long as you're staying kind of in this range when you're doing your chopping, you should be good to go. So that is the Gunstock Bushcrafter. Give you a little close-up of that desert ironwood. That also has the Trinity pin out on it. Gorgeous. Really nice. If I can find a place to set it, you only get to see the blade from here on out. So, Next up is a KE Bushy uh, designed by Mr. Kevin Estella himself. You'll recognize Kevin. He writes articles for us. He writes articles for Recoil Magazine. He writes or articles for several outdoor publications uh, that I can't think of at the moment, but uh, he's also written a really awesome book. Uh, you can check that out on Amazon. Uh, look for his last name, E-S-T-E-L-A, first name Kevin. And this is the K-E Bushy that he designed for Andy. This wood, if you're wondering if you haven't seen this before, this is Catalox. Really beautiful, detailed wood. Got a lot of character to it. It's actually real hard to pick up on the video uh, because it picks up the shine from the light a lot. Um, really beautiful. The pictures actually came out pretty great on it. If you want to go check those out, um, you got some previews up on the, the blog post that we put out every Friday under news and events. Really awesome design. So Kevin uh, is a martial artist uh, with some knife training. Uh, so he not only designed this, uh, he's a survival skills instructor as well. So he not only survived this for uh, very general outdoor use, uh, but also if you happen to need to protect yourself and hold it in certain ways that benefit you in that fashion. Uh, it's meant to be uh, usable in that as well, but make no mistake, this is a outdoor knife first and foremost with a little extra features to bear. So eighth inch A2 on that, really nice high grind on that. So if you like a, a thinner blade on your, on your bushcraft knives, that one's gonna be where to go with a high grind on there. 
locks in the hand, really beautiful design. There's a reason that this is one of the most popular knives we have. Um, and it's KE approved, as Kevin will tell you. So going back to uh, what I showed you earlier with the double mint jade G10, we got one of our classic bush fingers and that double mint jade G10. The lime pen stripe, as you saw earlier in the other ones. Really beautiful how that stuff finishes out. Black liners on that, of course. Black pins, got the Trinity pen out. Nice high grind on that as well. Super beautifully done. Uh, you guys know the bush finger very well by now if you have followed Fiddleback Forge for any length of time because it is one of Andy's very first designs and it has stood the test of time uh, because it's a fantastic knife. So uh, it was even modeled for um, our Midtech line many moons ago. And uh, there's lots of those that were sold as well. So it's been a very popular model, not only on the handmade side, but on the mid-tech side as well. Um, although it is not available as a mid-tech anymore. So a variation on the bush finger is the full finger. So why are we calling it the full finger? Because the handle is very much more full than the bush finger. If you want a comparison photo of the bush finger and this, uh, check on our Instagram account at fiddlebackforge.com. I posted up one uh, about a week and a half ago, a week to 10 days ago. Uh, so that's on there so you can see the difference in size and shape. Uh, the blade on the full finger is a little bit shorter than the bush finger. Uh, it's got a little more belly. It's got a little more height to it. Uh, if you measure from my thumb to index finger, um, the handle is a lot more full, a lot more open. So once you get your index in there, uh, no matter if your hands are big or if your hands are small, it's going to feel like it was made for you. It's going to be comfortable. And if you like a full figured as far as the handle goes a, more of a thick a thicker handle uh, more filling in the hand uh, this one is going to be the choice that you want to make uh, if you like a thinner handle uh, the bush finger is going to be the way that you want to go so a2 steel on that started out as 1 8 inch really beautiful nice taper tang on that the black liners and the orange pinstripes really set off this tiffany blue g10 which has been super popular um, that's just a great combo of colors. It really makes each one of them pop. So that's the Fiddleback Forge full finger. I've got nowhere to put this one. So sorry, that one to be a little off the screen there. And last, but definitely not least, another knife. One of the newer designs. You're not going to see this very much. Uh, we've only made a few of these and Andy does not have the intent on making a lot of these. Uh, it was just a fun design that he wanted to do. And so he did. Uh, Tiffany Blue G10 again, this is the needle. So if you guys are Game of Thrones fans or ever seen Game of Thrones, uh, you know where the name came from. Although I know, I know this is not a sword uh, like it was in the show, but uh, very much the same spirit of that. So really cool swedge on the blade there. A2 Steel, this one starts its life as 532 uh, A2 Steel. I uh, have to go a little thicker here in the middle uh, so that you can get the taper and that long lean grind. So, so you have enough material at the end to make it that length. I got the Trinity pin out on that. And of course, this one's so thin uh, that you can't get the double rows of pins up here like you're used to seeing from Fiddleback Forge, but it is just big enough to get our trademark bullseye lanyard tube in there. So Tiffany blue on the scales, uh, black liners with uh, that beautiful royal blue pinstripe, really beautiful knife. Uh, whatever you think this knife is intended for, uh, that's what it was made for. So uh, we'll just leave it at that. And uh, if you like that, go ahead and pick it up because uh, there are not gonna be very many of these. We've only made, I think, three or four of these. Um, and I believe that the goal was to probably only make half a dozen and that was it. So. Uh, that was last I heard anyway. So that is the needle. And these are all of the knives for Fiddleback Friday. I don't know if I'll be able to make that one not fall down. Okay, I'll just hold that one. All right. So those are the knives, minus one, for Fiddleback Friday. And i uh, really glad you guys checked it out. Uh, keep in mind these all go up on the website at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, fiddlebackforge.com. And until next week, life's too short to carry an ugly knife, so get a fiddle back.
or or a lander or a JB knife works. Either way, life's too short to carry an ugly knife. Pick up one of these. We'll see you guys next week.